Hey there guys, welcome back. Another month means another issue of Halo Escalation, this one concluding the Glass Horizon story arc and bringing to a close our introduction to Holly Tanaka. There are a few interesting revelations, and before we dive into it, I'm just going to say, called it, well, some of it. This is Halo Escalation, issue 18. Naturally, the issue picks up where the last one left off. In 2556, Tanaka, the two ODSTs from the previous issue, and two nameless marines who will disappear in a few panels, are heading to the surface of the recently glassed Slayel. The ODSTs from the last issue continue to ensure that the reader hates their guts, talking about how they hope to see some action planet side and making a jab at Tanaka because she's an engineer potentially going into a combat zone. Tanaka, to her credit, just lets it all slide. We flash back to 2551, a young Tanaka and the two survivors from her camp hiding out in some caves. The two men try to get Tanaka to interact, and she tells them to just get it over with. We all know what it is. Thankfully, and really obviously, the two men are not rapists in the making, but saved her because, well, it's the decent thing to do. Of course, this guy isn't so noble that he won't remind Tanaka why she's alive. Tanaka accuses her saviors of letting Mr. Crazy out during the last issue, thus dooming the entire camp, but they reveal that it was in fact Tanaka's father who let the man free. Mr. Tanaka knew that a public execution would hurt camp morale, and decided instead to let the man wander the glasslands, hoping nature would kill him instead. Unfortunately, that backfired spectacularly. So, with Tanaka more or less on board to work with these two men, they reveal that there are some extra supplies buried not far from where their original camp was. When Tanaka asks how they expect to get past Jackal patrols, the two men reveal that they were insurrectionists, and promise to teach Tanaka what they know. Needless to say, the plan goes off without a hitch. They bait the Jackal, steal some weapons, make a couple kills, and retrieve their supplies with no injury or error. One couldn't ask for a better scenario. Briefly jumping forward to 2556, Tanaka and company discover the beacon that attracted their attention in the first place, and not far away, a recently dead body with plasma damage. Score one for Tanaka. Sort of. Once again back in 2551, everything the group needs is secure and they prepare to head out. Tanaka though wants to head back to their original camp to check for survivors, namely her father, but the other two basically say no. Because, well, even as they point out, there's no way they're going to get that lucky twice in a row. Tanaka tries to insist with her shotgun, but the men insist harder. They then set out, hoping to find other survivor camps. We jump forward again to 2556, as the group comes across an agricultural station that was lucky enough to survive the glassing. Mostly. They quickly assess that this is most likely where the survivors and jackals are holding up, or rather, somewhere under the facility. So, the group makes their way into some caves that run beneath the station. One of the ODSTs makes a misstep on some brittle ground, and quickly finds himself in the middle of the jackal nest. Tanaka and the other ODST, not far behind. Thankfully, seeing as they are trained soldiers, two of them ODSTs, the group quickly recovers and starts taking the jackals out. Tanaka spots one moving away from the firefight and quietly pursues. It leads her right to the survivors. As she kills the jackal, we get a quick flashback of Tanaka on Minab, having survived for two years, eventually being rescued by the UNSC. And just in time, it would seem as one of the former insurrectionists seems to have been pretty badly hit. Back in 2556, Tanaka and company bring the survivors back to the Cascadia, and the captain makes a recommendation for Holly's integration into the Spartan 4 program. The comic comes to a close with a quick look at Tanaka's future R. Uh, uh, oh, 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 wait, 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 that, that's the armor she'll have? Not the red suit? So, so if Tanaka's the tan Spartan, who are the other two? The red Spartan very clearly is female, look at her. Could this mean that Macer actually did make it into the Spartan 4 program? Or is this another female Spartan we might be familiar with? Or, the hell, a new Spartan altogether? And then who the hell is ODST Helmet over here? I can't believe it's Buck if Romeo isn't on Locke's team. As I said in my video about the Halo 5 cover art, there's no way they'd ever split up Buck and Romeo, especially after the events of Halo New Blood, and I doubt they'd have another new character. Perhaps Spartan Thorn joins the group. Spartan Ops was mainly about Thorn, at least in the cinematics, and the bonus items included with Halo 4's limited edition were his. So maybe 343 is finally trying to push Thorn as a main character, of sorts. Hopefully we'll learn the identities of Locke's team within the next few weeks. E3 isn't too far off, after all. So that brings to a close this issue of Halo Escalation, and I have to say it was pretty good. I loved learning about Tanaka and what it's like having to survive on a world after it's been glassed. It's a story we've never really seen, and it was pretty well executed. If I had any real complaints other than some of the faces, it would be that the arc is a little short. It certainly would have benefited from at least one more issue. Still, this minor complaint aside, the arc was overall great, especially for something that was only two issues. 
Before we go, let's take a look forward. The cover art and description of Halo Escalation number 21 were recently revealed, and the latter discloses two key points. The first is that the Absolute Records story arc will be six issues long. Not only is that the longest arc to date, that also means there's potential for some major revelations along the way. This also means the arc will conclude in November of this year, just a month after Halo 5 comes out. The second point revealed is this mention of a powerful new combatant. Who, or what could it be? A Guardian? The Didact? The Flood? The Forerunner? Something new entirely? There are so many possibilities and all of them have me excited. Finally, take a look at the cover itself. The Spartan right at the center. Looks a lot like Tanaka, doesn't it? I don't know about you, but everything about this next story arc has me ecstatic. Anyway, that about wraps things up for this issue. Next month we'll begin the Absolute Record story arc, and I really, really can't wait. Thanks for joining me as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means more than I can express in a few minutes of audio. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it around on whatever social media you see fit, and all that jazz. Thank you so much. Your support is everything. I would not be where I am without you. Thanks.